So the Galaxy Note 10 and Note 10 Plus were both released by Samsung about two weeks ago, and in the first two weeks, there was a lot of noise surrounding these phones. There were a lot of really positive reviews about the amazing specs on these phones, and there was obviously a lot going on, being that this is one of the most powerful flagship phones released every single year, and the Note 10 is no exception. But now that it's been two weeks, it's time to put the spec sheets aside and actually look at how this phone performs under daily use. So after using this phone for two weeks, I found a lot of things that weren't mentioned in the original reviews, and I wanna share them with you in this video. So in this video, like I said, I'm gonna share with you all the different features that I found that other people did not mention that are either really annoying or really positive about this phone that could sway your opinion either way onto whether or not this is the phone for you. Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. I'm Michael Bryan, and like I said, this video is a two weeks later review of the Galaxy Note 10 Plus right here. Now, you've probably seen a lot of reviews out there that people talk about the specs of it a lot. They talk about how big the screen is, the battery, the processor, maybe they test out a couple things with a camera, but actually using it every single day for two weeks, this video is going to be more of the subtle things, so I'm going to assume you already know, you know, how big the battery is and stuff like that, and I'm just gonna talk about purely the experience of using this phone on a day-to-day -day basis. So, starting off with the general form of this phone, it's obviously huge. The Note 10 Plus is just massive as far as phones go, but that's kind of expected if you're buying a Note, they've always been the largest phone basically. And so one thing that I kind of noticed was a little bit annoying with this is because it's a glass sandwich, so very, very smooth glass, round edges everywhere, uh, and it's a very large phone, you're going to be dropping this phone, especially if you have smaller hands and if you don't have a grippy case on here, it's very likely that you'll drop this almost every time you pick it up. If you're laying down texting, it's gonna fall on your face. And this is a big phone, it might hurt a little bit more than maybe your Nokia flip phone, obviously. So there's, you know, you might drop this phone. That's one drawback. Now, another one that actually is a little bit more subtle, and I didn't notice it until actually just yesterday, and that is actually the fact that they move the camera bump over uh, creates a different, smaller issue. So... I typically lay this phone down when I'm writing on it. I don't hold it and write, I lay it on a table. And because the camera bump is no longer all the way across like it was on the S10, now it's this little vertical thing in the corner, what you actually did is you create two different points that are going to touch the table. So you have right there on the camera, then you have a point down in the corner that's gonna touch the table. And then one of the other two corners is going to touch the table. So it kind of rocks back and forth and it's a little bit wobbly when you're typing. That's not something that is a huge game changer though because you can really, you know, if you put a case on this phone, which you probably kind of have to anyway, then that totally resolves that problem. Now, of course, that brings the other issue of if you have a big case and it's really grippy, this phone might be really hard to fit in your pockets. So again, I don't wanna get too into the negatives of the form of this phone you know, despite the fact that it's so big, it actually is pretty comfortable in your hands once you pick it up and, you know, are comfortable not dropping it. Uh, it is actually, you know, surprisingly comfortable given the size of this. Now, another thing they changed with the form that maybe I'm not the biggest fan of is the movement of the on button or the power button over to the left side. So now that's, as you probably saw before, it's kind of the Bixby slash power button and you can kind of remap it to do other things. Um, so that's, you know, that's new. But what I don't like about it being on the left side is actually that taking screenshots can be a little bit more annoying now. So rather than just squeezing on either side of the phone, you have to get two fingers and line them up and they're so close together and you just squeeze like that, um, which is again, just a small drawback there. It's not the end of the world. And of course you can also do the palm screenshots but that has another little caveat there. So if you're taking a screenshot with your palm, you have to make sure that your entire palm touches the entire phone and you swipe. Otherwise you end up accidentally, like it registers as a finger swiping uh, and obviously it's not taking a screenshot then. So if you get good at that, that's really cool and that's really useful, but otherwise you're gonna have to have your fingers close together taking a screenshot, um, just a small drawback there. Now, something I really like about this phone, obviously everyone's talking about the screen, the display, but I think I would be kind of stupid to not mention it in this video, that's something that is definitely, uh, you know, a huge part of this phone, quite literally. Um, and so watching any kind of movies on here, watching videos on here, it's actually really, really nice, really comfortable. 
One small thing though, and this is with a lot of phones, not just this phone, the ratio of this, the two, I think it's a two to one ratio, means that you typically have a lot of dead space on the ends of videos. Um, so if you're watching on YouTube, you can pinch and zoom in, which is cool, but then you cut off the top and bottom of the video. So that's sort of something that is not negative, uh, particular to this phone, that's every phone out there today, um, but it's just something that I noticed. With the SIM tray on the top, I do like how you can have an SD card in there. That's something really cool that maybe I won't use a whole lot on this phone, but what I really don't like, and I was trying to use a second SIM on this phone, is the fact that I don't have one that's eligible for dual SIM. So I thought the way it worked was the unlocked phones were always eligible for dual SIM, and they had the slot there on the top, but this one apparently doesn't, even though it's an unlocked phone. I wanted to put two SIMs in there, and the second one just doesn't doesn't fit, um, so maybe I'm doing something wrong, or maybe this is just not the right SIM tray for that, but honestly, that's a little bit of a drawback and a little bit annoying uh, that they don't make that a little more clear. So something that's really cool that I kind of didn't notice again until very recently was that right next to the phone, you have this little flashing, it looks like a dead pixel when you're calling, and it's actually going to be a sensor behind the screen. So I really like how Samsung's moving more and more stuff behind the screen. Maybe someday they'll have the camera behind the screen, who knows, but for now, having that extra little sensor right there so, you know, it detects when it's up against your ear or not. So, of course, having the ultrasonic fingerprint sensor is absolutely amazing. I love signing into this phone just with my thumb, uh, just tapping the screen like that so you don't have any kind of, you know, wasted button or dead space in the middle. It's literally under your screen, and that's a really cool feature. So, this phone does have really good audio on the top and bottom, and I'll do a speaker test in a second for real this time, but something I didn't like was that because they slim down the speaker on the top, it's really, really thin. You actually can almost not even see it. Uh, so when you're on the phone, you actually have to have this like lower than you expect. And then the phone being so large, it's just kind of awkward. It's not like a normal shape that you want to be talking on the phone with. It kind of feels like you're holding a tablet or like it, dude, it, it actually literally feels like you're holding a Kindle next to your face. So they're, they're actually not that different in screen size. So a quick little aside right here, if you're new here and have not yet subscribed, but you're interested in the latest tech, make sure you get on and click the subscribe button and the bell icon so you don't miss the latest videos. So I did a little bit more research on getting rid of the headphone jack on the bottom and it turns out that actually 70% of flagship users, so people that are using the Note 10 or the S10, use Bluetooth headphones anyway and so Samsung figured it's probably not a big deal if they got rid of that. After complaining a lot, I did realize like typically I actually use my Galaxy Buds for the most part, but I do have some wired headphones. I just have to not use them or get a dongle now. Not a huge deal. I kind of just adapted to only using my Galaxy Buds all the time. So if you're getting this phone, I do recommend that you get Galaxy Buds. I'll link a review right there and in the description of where I reviewed the Galaxy Buds. They're really easy to use with this phone and they're obviously a big workaround for not having a headphone jack. So talking about the speed, the power, and the temperature of this phone, those are three things that kind of go together a little bit. So the speed, obviously this is a very powerful phone. I had no problems with it slowing down. Even using Samsung DeX, it worked really well with every kind of load I put on this. Um, so basically everything I'm using, I can't possibly slow this phone down. Then the battery on here, as everyone kind of mentioned before, it is actually lasting easily a whole day right now. I'm getting about a day and maybe four or five hours the next day. If I'm really, con uh, if I'm really conservative, I can probably get two days out of this. Uh, and that's definitely a huge plus. Now the temperature of this phone, a lot of people were worried about that. I mentioned before that it got a little bit warm and really what that is, is if you're doing wireless charging a lot or if you're doing something that's very intense on the phone, so like AR doodle or a lot of the augmented reality stuff, then it does tend to get a little bit warm up along the top of the phone just a little bit, but it's not like hot to touch, just warm so that you kind of know the phone's working hard. If you had a case, maybe you would get a little bit hotter there, um, but overall, I don't think it's a huge concern. All right, now let's do a speaker test right here to see how loud this phone actually gets. So as you can see, like it's approximately the same volume as my voice. It's really, so as you can see, it's approximately the same volume as my voice. It's really an impressively loud speaker, obviously just a phone speaker. It doesn't have a ton of bass as you kind of don't really expect from phones, um, but it's definitely loud enough that I'm impressed, it's maybe not the best feature about this phone, but it definitely gets the job done. So before I complained that the S Pen wasn't working for the zoom feature for me, because I was kind of told that you like swirl it, but you kind of 
don't actually want to do that. You just want to make a C shape and then hold it at the top or the bottom and you can zoom. So what you want to do is just kind of go like that. And if you hold it, it zooms out. And if you go from the bottom and go up, it'll just continue to zoom in. So let's do that again. Uh, and it just continues to zoom. The only thing is it's kind of a set zoom uh, speed. So if you're trying to take a video, you can't slow it down or speed it up. Again, I'm not sure what the application of that is. Uh, and as far as the camera goes, I haven't been using the S Pen much. Typically what I'm used to, at least with my S10, is you can just prop up the phone if you're trying to take a picture of a group. And when you hold your hand up, it, it recognizes your palm and it'll automatically take a picture. No S Pen needed. Uh, and so, Honestly, the S Pen, in my opinion, hasn't really been super useful except for taking some off-screen notes. So when the screen's off, I really like that feature that I can just start writing on the screen with the S Pen. It'll save the notes and I can look at them later. That's literally the only thing I use the S Pen for though. So some other things with the camera, it does have four cameras on the back, uh, really only three though. So you have three cameras and then a depth camera. Now the, the, the time of flight, the depth camera there is really not super useful. So it is kind of good if you're doing like AR doodle or you're trying to do like uh, augmented reality, like measuring. So if you want to measure like how big my camera is, I showed you that in the previous video. But the problem is one, it's not super accurate. And two, it doesn't really go that far. So you're not going to measure things that are more than like four or five feet away which at that point, I don't really understand the need for it. So it'd be great if you could measure something really far away and just get like a, a relative distance maybe, or you know, if you wanted to recognize how big something was, that's cool. But when something is in front of you, I, I feel like most people are pretty good at judging, you know, approximately how big it is, especially if it's four feet away. You can say like, yeah, that's about 12 inches. You know, you can usually tell how big things are. So I don't really see an application for the AR on this phone yet. I think that Samsung kind of put it in there just so they're prepared for the future. So this phone can withstand whatever they think the future of, uh, you know, technology is going to look like. So the cameras in this phone obviously are really cool. And I showed you before that there is like the live focus video. It looks really cool. Again, not super practical, but then again, everything on a camera is, you know, mostly just for fun anyway, for a lot of people to, you know, record fun things, take pictures of whatever fun moments, stuff like that. Uh, something that's really cool with this is the zoom in mic. So obviously you're not literally zooming in. You're not like putting a mic in front of somebody, but what you can do is as you zoom in, it turns the audio up. Uh, so it feels like you're getting closer to the subject. It just, it kind of eliminates what could be a little bit weird uh, if you're taking a video. So if you zoom in and the audio stays farther away, it can be a little bit weird. So it's cool that they fix that just with software on this phone. So some other miscellaneous things that I noticed, I really like the trash can on here. When you delete a photo, it goes into like a 14 day trash can. So if you accidentally delete stuff, you can go back and recover it. Kind of like the recycle bin that Microsoft's been doing for like a decade. Uh, but it's cool that this has that. I do like that feature. And then of course, Dex, Samsung, Dex is one of the biggest features of this phone that everyone's getting so excited about now. The fact that you can have a desktop on this phone. Of course, you can do that on previous phones as well, but I tried this out. I used Dex for an entire week and did not use my laptop. So I'm making a video next week about that. If you're interested, make sure you get on and click the subscribe button. I'll be putting that out and telling you guys what my experience was like using Dex for an entire week. So guys, to summarize with the Samsung Galaxy Note 10, I think that this phone is, you know, has a lot to offer. It's really cool, really powerful, but unfortunately, I don't think it's anything like especially different from the previous, the Note 9, the Note 8, or even from the S10. So for me personally, I think I might actually be sticking with my S10 as a daily phone because yes, I actually do like the headphone jack a lot. I also like the smaller form of it so I can put a case on it and it still feels pretty normal in my hand. This is a little harder to put a case on just because it's so big. So overall guys, I think that this is an amazing phone. Maybe not the phone for me. Maybe it is the phone for you. Comment down below and let me know. Thanks for watching guys. I'll see you next time.